what should the interior partitions in your mass timber building be constructed of? What are the fire rating requirements? Do they have to be mass timber? Can they be mass timber? These sound like some simple questions, but there's actually quite a bit to unpack here. So let's dive into it today. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks. When it comes to answering questions about mass timber building design, one of the most common types of questions that we see relate to the interior partitions. Now, some people assume that because the building is mass timber, the interior partitions also need to be mass timber, while others approach it thinking that the interior partitions will not be mass timber and they wonder about that interaction of differential materials. So in today's video, we're going to try to unpack a lot of these questions and really address it through the context of several lens. What does the code have to say about the materials permitted for interior partitions in a mass timber building? What are the fire resistance rating requirements for those interior partitions? And then two kind of subtopics at the end, acoustics and using interior partitions as shear walls in a mass timber building. All right, so we're gonna start out this discussion as we start out a lot of these videos, and that's because it's a topic that is so pertinent across the board when designing a mass timber building, and that is construction types. In order to determine what are the options for interior partitions in a mass timber building, we really do need to identify early on what is the construction type that the building is going to be. Now we've done videos about that in the past. You can check that out up in the upper right hand corner about how to choose the best construction type for your project. But let's take a look and, and specifically look at type three, type four and type five construction. And what does the code have to say about interior partitions? Now we're going to look at types three and type five together because from a building code perspective, the allowances and fire rating requirements for those interior partitions are the same. Now we can do a mass timber building using either type three construction or type five construction. And when it comes to the interior partitions, the code simply says that those can be of any material permitted by code. So this could be something like light wood frame wood construction. It could be mass timber interior partition walls. It could be cold form steel studs, masonry, etc. Any material that's permitted by code is allowed to be used as an interior partition wall type in a type three construction or a type five construction project. Now the specific fire rating requirements for those interior partitions are gonna vary based on what that wall is being used for. Let's say we're designing a multifamily building and we have unit demising walls that are also functioning as load bearing walls. In table 601 of IBC, we can see that a 3A and a 5A building are going to require a one hour fire resistance rating and in 3B and 5B, Table 601 tells us a zero hour fire rating requirement, but recall for any multifamily occupancy, walls that separate one dwelling unit from another have to have at least a half hour fire resistance rating. So that would apply in this example. Other interior wall types, such as a corridor wall, a shaft wall, an occupancy separation wall, or even a firewall, the fire rating requirements for those are going to basically be the highest of what's required in table 601 and what is required of those individual wall types as defined in their applicable section in chapter seven of IBC. Now, when we turn to type four construction, this is where the requirements get a little bit more complicated for interior partition walls. First, we'll take a look at type four HT as it's called in the 2021 code. In previous versions of IBC, this was simply just called type four construction. Now type four requires that all interior materials be exposed heavy or mass timber framing elements with one exception, and that exception is for interior partitions. The code says that we can have in lieu of solid exposed heavy timber or mass timber in type 4HT, a one hour fire resistance rated interior partition. Now this of course opens the door to using assemblies like a wood stud partition wall, a steel stud partition wall, as long as they have that one hour fire resistance rating requirement. Now, where this starts to become a little bit complicated is when, let's go, go back to our multifamily building example. Remember we said the unit demising walls, for example, require a one hour rating if they're load bearing walls. But within any individual dwelling unit, there are of course several walls to break that space apart. An interior partition separating a kitchen from a bathroom, a bedroom from a living room. Now those would not generally be load bearing and because they're not separating one dwelling unit from another, those would normally not require a fire resistance rating, regardless of the construction type. But that's not true in type 4HT. Remember that in type 4HT, either all interior partitions are exposed 
heavy timber or mass timber construction. In this case, those would have to be a minimum four inches thick to qualify as a heavy timber material according to chapter 23 of IBC, or they could be one hour fire resistance rated construction. However, there is really no other section in the code that would require an interior partition wall to have a fire resistance rating that just separates a kitchen from a bathroom within a given dwelling unit. So this is an area where the interior partition requirements of 4HT are more restrictive really than any other construction type in the context of what the fire resistance rating requirements are. Another situation where this has come up as creating some complications in a type 4HT mass timber building is an office scenario where let's say you have an interior conference room in this office building. And let's say that that interior conference room is just separated from the office and, and hallway space around it with glass walls. Now, normally those glass walls would be unrated, they're non-load bearing, but again, in a type 4HT construction, if an interior partition is not heavy or mass timber meeting the minimum sizes of chapter 23 of IBC, then it would technically require a one hour fire resistance rating. So just something to be aware of if you are exploring type 4HT is just make sure you think through the implications of this interior partition one hour fire resistance rating construction requirement. And then the last group of construction types that we'll look at are types 4A, 4B, and 4C. These are three new construction types introduced in the 2021 IBC that allow mass timber buildings to be much taller than previously permitted by code. We did a much deeper dive on these new construction types. You can check it out in this video in the upper right hand corner. Now kind of the quick synopsis on interior partitions in a 4A, 4B, and 4C building. If they are load bearing interior partitions, they require a two hour fire resistance rating for 4C and 4B, or a three hour fire resistance rating for 4A. They can be mass timber or non-combustible materials. However, they can't be light wood frame construction regardless of what the fire resistance rating of those walls is. And also note that those three new construction types do have limitations on how much timber can be exposed. 4C would allow you to use all interior mass timber partitions fully exposed. 4B does have some limitations on the area of allowable exposure for mass timber walls. And 4A doesn't allow any of the interior timber to be exposed as either a wall surface or a ceiling surface. Now the last two design scenarios that I wanted to cover relate to acoustics and shear walls. Now if we are using mass timber as an interior partition, we do need to consider the acoustics design scenario where generally speaking the bare mass timber panel is going to be inadequate to separate one room from another from an acoustics perspective. Let's say again going back to this multifamily building scenario where we want to use mass timber as the unit demising wall. Generally we're going to have to cover one or both sides of that mass timber wall to get an adequate acoustics separation from one room to the next. Again, we did a much deeper dive on acoustics and you can check it up in this video here, but that is one of the reasons why many projects, many multifamily projects are looking to use materials other than mass timber for interior partitions because of the acoustics performance as well as the need to route electrical wiring and plumbing drain lines through the walls, mass timber doesn't provide that cavity. So you're generally furring out to create the cavity, covering up the timber in the process, which negates a lot of the aesthetic benefits. And lastly, on shear walls, if we are using interior partitions that are mass timber construction, generally speaking, we're going to be building those tight to the underside of the mass timber floor panel that is above them. And when doing that, they're going to generally attract lateral loads in the building essentially making us design them as shear walls. Now, technically speaking, you could design some type of a slip connection at the head of wall that would allow those walls to be braced for out of plane horizontal pressure forces without adding diaphragm seismic or wind forces to the walls. But that's a difficult detail to get correct and installed properly because mass timber shear walls are fairly stiff. They're going to want to attract load. So most projects that are looking to use interior partitions are designing those interior mass timber partitions as shear walls. Now, the reason that we bring this up is to highlight the fact that there are now allowances in the building code in both the 2021 special design provisions for wind and seismic, as well as the 2022 version of ASCE 7 that do recognize and allow the use and design of CLT shear walls. They are prescriptive approaches and they do have some unique detailing requirements. Some projects have looked to use alternative design approaches and some of those are discussed in this video that you can check out in the upper right hand corner. Well, that's it for today's video. I thank you so much for making it to the end and until next time, we'll see you later.